Hello everyone and thanks for joining us on this gorgeous day. We're going to share the winner of our social media challenge in our follow-up email, so stay posted for that. During this webinar, you will get a high-level overview of event waste reduction and recycling, then we will finish with Q&A. In exactly one week, we will have the second webinar building off what you learned today. Information presented in this webinar series is designed to be useful for all size private and public events with a range of themes from conferences to music festivals. Please note, we are recording this presentation and we will make it available online. So if you miss anything, you'll have a chance to go back and check it out. Before diving into the content, it's always nice to know who is talking. My name is Alex Slaymaker and I'm Swaco's Outreach Specialist. Prior to coming to Swaco, I helped Events Go Zero Waste and launched a Zero Waste Education Program for staff and students at Arizona State University. Now at Swaco, I work on a diverse range of programs, including helping event organizers reduce waste. In this role, I have the pleasure of collaborating with my co-presenter, Christy Higginbotham. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a programs administrator at Swaco. I have been with Swaco for over 17 years and specialize in helping events and schools implement waste reduction and diversion programs. I also administer Swaco's grant program and communities for communities and events. We encourage you to type questions or comments as they pop into your head, and if we don't get to your questions in Q&A, we did not forget about you, and we'll answer all your questions in our follow-up email. New questions will definitely arise while you try to implement these ideas, so never hesitate to reach out to us. Our emails are on the screen, and we are always available and willing to help. So right now, you do your best to reduce waste and divert materials from the landfill. You're on the right path. After this webinar, you will be all on the same page about what is recyclable and why. And then during the next webinar, which is a week from now, we will dive into specific strategies for event waste reduction. With these two short presentations, you'll be prepared to substantially increase diversion at your events, diverting materials from the landfill to our own community, creating local jobs and conserving resources. This high level overview is for people who are wondering what exactly Swaco is and what we do. Swaco is a public agency and we work to position our region as a leader in environmental sustainability by offering a range of waste reduction, recycling, and safe disposal services, including the provision of recycling education and recycling drop-off containers, along with the Bring Me Back campaign, encouraging residents to recycle plastic bags, film, and wrap while opting for reasonable alternatives whenever possible. We sponsor free yard waste composting for Franklin County residents, and collaborate with law enforcement to reduce illegal dumping. Our team helps communities recycle electronics, provides free household hazardous waste disposal, and offers landfill tours. In fact, over 2,000 school kids learned about the importance of waste reduction on our landfill tour last year. As event organizers, you're probably most familiar with our event waste reduction grant program and container loan program. At the end of the next webinar, we'll discuss these opportunities in detail. More info on these programs that I discussed today are all available on our snazzy new website, swaco.org. So you may be wondering, with a wealth of resources online about waste reduction at events, why is our team at Swaco investing time and resources into this topic? There are sustainability and waste reduction guides online for event organizers, but what works for events in San Francisco may not be the same strategies that work in Franklin County. So we're creating resources, custom designed for our local needs, infrastructure, and opportunities. Event waste reduction practices demonstrate your organization's commitment to environmental sustainability because these efforts conserve natural resources. Due to the high volume of events in our county, there's a huge opportunity to divert materials from the landfill and inspire thousands of guests to make more sustainable choices in their everyday lives. Events are a high impact way to support a cultural shift towards sustainability and for these reasons, we're so excited about the community's interest in our event waste reduction assistance, including this webinar series. As event organizers, you're in an important position to make a measurable difference and help lead our community towards this more sustainable future. And during this webinar series, our goal is to empower you and your team to increase waste reduction and recycling efforts, whatever that looks like for you. Every event in person is starting with a different set of limiting factors and demands some strategies may be too basic or advanced for your event at this time. That's totally okay. Use what you can and make a note of strategies to try in the future. All right, let's dive in. I'm going to hand it over to Christy. Okay, everyone. Let's start with a poll. You should see a poll box on your screen now. The question is, 
what percentage of materials currently being landfilled do you think could have been recycled or recovered in Franklin County? Please indicate your best guess. We'll give you a few more seconds. All right, everyone is pretty close. Although we recycle a large amount as a community, we still have a long way to go. Over 70% of landfilled materials in Franklin County could have been diverted with current markets and infrastructure for a profit of approximately $41 million. We have an amazing opportunity to increase recovery of these materials by improving access and education. So what's being landfilled? The above graphic reflects a current breakdown of municipal, including residential and commercial, materials being landfilled in Franklin County. Cardboard listed under fibers is one of the most easily captured and recycled materials, but is too frequently landfilled instead. On average, 4,200 tons of material is landfilled at the Franklin County Sanitary Landfill every day. An opposing trend in Franklin County is that we have over a 40% recycling and composting rate. The national average is only 34, 34%, so this is really encouraging. Okay, let's do one last poll. Can you guess the amount of material in tons that was composted and recycled in Franklin County last year? We'll give you a few seconds. You're a smart bunch. <laughs> Last year we diverted over a million tons of material in Franklin County. This number is equivalent to the weight of 200,000 elephants. It's exciting to think that we diverted this much material from the landfill last year, and yet inspiring to know that there's still much more that can be recovered. All of the materials pictured in this slide are accepted for single stream or mixed recycling in Franklin County. Plastic jugs and bottles, paper and cardboard, carton containers, aluminum and steel cans, and glass jars and bottles are all accepted locally. Container labels do not need removed, but these materials should be free of food and liquid. Plastic bottles should have the caps screwed on, and cardboard boxes should always be broken down. This information and more may be found on our website at swaco.org. You may be wondering, where do all these mixed recyclables go, and how are they sorted and processed? In Franklin County, most of the single stream recyclables are processed at Rumkey's Columbus Material Recovery Facility, also known as a MRF located near the Ohio State Fairgrounds. At the Rumkey Murph, co-mingled recyclables are sorted through mechanical and people power. Then compacted into cubes or bales, like the ones pictured in the photo on the bottom right. These commodities are then sold to companies that make these materials into new products. It's important to remember that recycling takes a team effort. We need citizens, businesses, and event organizers to place accepted items in recycling containers. We need MRFs to properly sort the recyclables. Manufacturers are needed to purchase these commodities for use as raw materials in order to manufacture products containing recycled content. And of course, we need people to purchase materials made from recycled content. This is how a circular economy works. The first step of this process requires people to sort out contamination. The cleaner the material is of potentially dangerous or unaccepted items, the safer the workers are, and the less likely the machines are to get jammed. Plastic bags are a big problem for MRFs because they can easily get caught in the machine gears. Please be sure to recycle your plastic bags at a Bring Me Back location near you to keep the recycling process running smoothly. All this talk about contamination may leave you thinking back to the slide about what is accepted in our local recycling programs. We want to ensure everyone's on the same page prior to educating your event attendees and vendors. So let's take a quick quiz. This is not a poll, so please just guess in your head. What do you think or what do you do with used paper towels, napkins, and tissues? Recycle, compost, or landfill? Paper towels, napkins, and tissues are not accepted for recycling. These fiber materials can definitely be composted, but if composting isn't provided, they must be landfilled. Many event attendees get confused about these items and try to recycle them. This is part of the reason we suggest providing napkins only upon request, in order to decrease the volume and potential contamination in your recycling containers. All right, on to the next material. Are cans accepted? Absolutely. 
Aluminum and other metal cans can be recycled infinitely and not degrade in quality. Glass bottles and jars are also accepted for recycling. Last one, how about a plastic cup? No, only bottleneck plastic containers are accepted locally at this time. So why are there recycling opportunities available for plastic bottleneck containers and not tubs? Currently, Rumpke only has a consistent buyer for plastic bottles in our region. Even if they have the same number on them, indicating that they are the same type of plastic, plastic bottleneck containers are created in a different way from plastic tubs. A recycling manufacturer must have a special technology to melt and merge these items together, or else it's like mixing oil and water. In Central Ohio, our recycling industry does not have this technology. With this knowledge, we encourage you to consider how to avoid plastic cups and tubs prior to your event so that you don't have to deal with the confusion or frustration of attendees and contamination of your recycling stream. Let's now discuss a few labels you may see and what they mean. When you see a product with a recycling Mobius symbol, like in the first picture, it indicates that the product can be recycled somewhere. Somewhere being the key word. Just because something is recyclable somewhere doesn't mean it's accepted for recycling where you live. Likewise, the biodegradable symbol shown in the second picture can also be misleading because this just means the product will decompose eventually. While the compostable symbols shown in the third and fourth pictures mean that the product should decompose in less than 60 days under the right circumstances like an industrial compost processor. Compostable materials are the better option for composting rather than those labeled biodegradable. It is important to understand this because you want to ensure that you are not sending processors something that will take years to decompose. Beware of greenwashing. Just because it's green and has a leaf on it does not mean it's compostable. Biodegradable plastics manufacturers have done a great job marketing how green they are, but don't assume that they are the best option. Many compost processors cannot actually break down the products labeled biodegradable quickly, if at all. You may have wondered at some point if a cup that looks like plastic and is labeled biodegradable is more environmentally friendly than a paper cup. If you think back to the last slide, the biodegradable cup may take a special process or a long time to break down, as compared to the paper cup, which is compostable and will break down in less than 60 days. When considering packaging and serviceware, this scale reflects general eco-friendliness from a life cycle perspective. Polystyrene, also known as styrofoam, and other types of plastic cups are never a good option. Certified compostable cups are typically better than plastics since they're made from renewable natural resources. But, but paper cups are better since they degrade fast and can be made from recycled content and are also made from renewable natural resources. But of course, reusable cups are most preferable. So, now you understand what to recycle, but how do you communicate this to your guests? It's critical to the success of your program to have clear signage to help attendees properly sort. These signs are just examples of effective signage options. Proper sorting at recycling containers is important because contamination decreases the amount of materials that are effectively recycled and can increase costs. For example, if a recycling dumpster is contaminated with unacceptable items, it may not be pulled for recycling by the hauler. It is also extremely important to have the appropriate dumpsters labeled recycling only. You should work with your hauler to ensure this happens prior to the event. Think back to the slide with the recycling facility. Placing the wrong items in recycling containers can cause several issues. For example, some items put recycling workers at risk, like batteries or hazardous items which can spark fires in a sorting facility. Also, some items like plastic bags can damage sorting equipment. Recycling the wrong items makes it more challenging to effectively recover the proper recyclables. More time and money is spent removing materials that don't belong in the recycling stream from the from the beginning. These items essentially take a long field trip around the county before going to the landfill. Now I'll turn it back over to Alex. We always advocate for events to master recycling before considering the addition of organics diversion through composting. 
For example, if your event is only achieving a 25% diversion rate via recycling due to contamination and other issues, adding co composting might just increase frustration. Instead, we advocate for planners to focus on recycling efforts first until their diversion rates are higher. If and when you get to the point where composting is discussed among your team, it's important to know there are currently limited services for compost processors in Central Ohio. Start looking early if your recycling initiatives are successful and you decide to pursue composting. You will also need different signage if composting is included, which is why we included this slide. These signs are for your guests to use when sorting out your bins. Why do you think we put the landfill sign at the far right? We read from left to right, so the least preferred option, landfilling, should be the last one guests read. This is definitely an intentional decision and we advocate this as a best management practice. Because sorting signage for event attendees is so critical, critical for success, our team at Swaco is developing customizable signs that will be available on our website to be branded with your logo this year. You may be thinking, but wait, what about cardboard and all the other stuff we can divert from the landfill? You're right, there are definitely other materials to consider. Cardboard is frequently one of the largest waste streams at events and it's easily recycled. But this is typically done by vendors and your team, not guests, which is why it's not included on the signage that we shared. A best management practice is to have a separate bin for cardboard so it doesn't get wet or contaminated. However, you can also mix cardboard in with other recyclable materials. If you have an event that expects to produce a lot of unavoidable plastic film, it's important to know there are diversion options for these materials. The Bring Me Back campaign recycles clean and dry plastic bags, film, and wrap at many stores listed on our website. Reach out to one of these stores if you'd like to partner to divert these materials through their program. For example, Hilliard's upcoming Halloween Haunt event partnered with a local grocery store to promote the use of reusable bags and collect plastic bags from their guests for recycling. As a reminder, if you missed it earlier, plastic bags and film are considered contamination in mixed recycling. We suggest emptying recyclables out of a bag into the recycling bin. Obviously, there are a lot of items that are recyclable or donatable that aren't accepted in mixed recycling bins. If you ever have an item you're unsure what to do with as an event organizer or in your personal life, we encourage you to check out our new online search tool available at the link at the bottom of this slide. We include over 60 organizations and 200 locations to donate, compost, recycle, and safely dispose of a range of items from electronics to clothes. We talked about how to recycle and why it's important, but the largest amount of your work and the most opportunities at events are in source waste reduction. This means reducing the amount of materials that need to be managed before the event even happens. For those of you who aren't familiar, this inverted triangle is the EPA's guide for the most beneficial to least beneficial use pertaining to food waste. This same thinking can be applied to non-organic materials as well. For example, waste reduction in practice may look like swapping condiment packets for bulk containers. We'll, drive, we'll dive deeper into some of these specific strategies in webinar number two, but I wanted to hit on the importance of waste reduction now since we spent the majority of our time today talking about recycling. I didn't want you guys to think we forgot about it. So picture this scenario. You took efforts to reduce food waste by collecting RSVPs and more, but rain led to a decline in attendance at your event and now you're left with tons of boxes of food. Our go-to eco-solution to this problem may be composting, but the most responsible use of that material is actually to donate it to those in need. Many organizations and businesses get concerned about donating food due to, due to a perceived liability threat, but don't worry, this is just a myth. There is a federal law called the Good Samaritan Act passed in 1996 that protects businesses and organizations donating food in good faith. The Mid-Ohio Food Bank and Food Rescue US are great community resources accepting donated food that hasn't been served yet. Another option is to give away food from the event to volunteers or passerbys. For example, the Green Spotlight Awards this year hosted by the City of Columbus Green Spot Program, the leftover food was donated to those in the community. It's also worth noting, if you develop relationships with a local hog or chicken farmer before your event, they may be willing to take food not accepted for donation, like leftover food that was already served. You can always form these relationships at farmers markets or other opportunities such as this. To wrap it up, our tagline is from Waste to Resources and we try to embody this tagline in our services and educational outreach. Thanks for your dedication to achieving this goal with us. 
I'm really passionate about this topic and can tell by your enthusiastic questions and uh, your excitement about the webinar series that you guys are excited to increase your eco impact as well. And we just want to thanks, thank you for sharing your time with us today. We're going to follow up via email with a link to the second webinar and some other additional resources as well as a recording of this presentation. Uh, now we're going to answer a few questions and when you exit out, please take our survey. We would love to hear from you and hear if you have any input for us. All right, so there are a few themes in your questions. Um, I'll tackle this one first because it's easy. <laughs> if you're interested in learning more about container placement and contracting with your recycling hauler, you are actually in luck. We'll be, we're going to be answering all these questions and sharing specific event waste reduction strategies in the next webinar in a week at the same time um, as this one, so 12.30 p.m. Also on the docket, we'll discuss methods for tracking success, some planning tools for event organizers, and ways to create contracts with your vendors to support your event waste reduction goals. So get excited. I know I am. Let's see what other questions you all had. All right, so somebody asked, uh, what's a really successful local example of event waste reduction? I'm actually really happy to report that there are a ton of examples of event waste reduction that have been very successful. We just partnered with the Arts Festival actually over the weekend and Goodland Consulting um, to provide 150 recycling bins for the three-day event. And uh, this recycling program helped recover bottles and cans and that's through our container loan program which um, we'll be discussing more about next webinar. And if you just can't wait, you can always check out more on our website about that program as well. Uh, additionally, the Earth Day celebration this year hosted by Green Columbus in partnership with Rural Action had about 8,000 guests and they diverted an 85% uh, of materials were diverted, which is astonishing and a really amazing accomplishment, and 67% of the materials were diverted through composting. Um, so these accomplishments I get really inspired by and really show environmental leadership of our county's event organizers. Um, all right, what other questions do we have? All right, so we have one, what's the most important waste reduction tip you have for event organizers? Do you want to take this one, Christy? Sure. So beyond providing access and uh, signage for waste reduction, ensuring that you understand what's recyclable or compostable and engaging your partners like vendors and haulers in the creation of contracts to support your waste reduction goals is, is vitally important and uh, frequently overlooked. So um, being proactive uh, about uh, engaging these partners uh, is, is, is really critical to the success of a diversion program. Um, so this webinar was designed to ensure that you have the basic knowledge to create a successful program, uh, but we will go into more uh, contract, uh, more depth about contract design um, in, in webinar two. So, so please tune in for that. And we had a, another question about wanting to learn more about the recycling process. I know that's super interesting. Um, I am a waste nerd, so I'm also very interested in that type of thing. Uh, I'd suggest checking out Rumpke's YouTube videos. They have a wealth of resources, educational resources online, and they actually provide tours of their MRF in Columbus as well. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing what happens when people don't practice source reduction and recycling, check out our landfill tours. They can be a huge wake-up call and inspires me, you know, to work harder to reduce, reuse, and recycle every day. And I know I hear that feedback from a lot of people who come through the tour, um, that seeing the landfill really inspires them to do more and uh, be a better environmental steward. So, yeah, so looks like we got to the questions. Um, we just want to thank you for sharing your time with us today. You can expect to see a follow-up email in the next few days, and we hope you're excited for the next webinar. Enjoy your weekend and uh, the sunshine. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.